Hey guys, it's Rob C. back with Paperless Student. In today's video, I will be reviewing Liquid Text. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe if you're looking for a solution to go paperless with your studies or your business. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you turn on your notifications so you know when I release a new video. I haven't reviewed this application in over a year now and I feel like this application is a great rival to Margin Note 3. So let's take a look at it. I replaced Liquid Text as my main PDF annotating application a couple of months ago. I did a video explaining why I did that and I will link that video in the description down below. While the application hasn't worked for me personally, it might work for some of you guys. The application has two columns. The left column gives you options to add documents to the application. You can get a document from your files app, which accesses a lot of different cloud services and even some documents stored on your iPad. You can also open a web page. Just pick an article that you want to import and tap import. It's that simple. Here is the PDF version of the article I just picked. And you can do the same thing within your workspace. Very useful when there are articles online that you want to go through a bit later when you don't have internet access. You can also insert pictures from your photo library or browse for some through your files app. The right column contains your files in the application. Liquid Text allows you to create folders within folders. For those of you guys that like that type of organization, you can have a lot of folders within folders. You have two main ways to arrange your documents, to organize your documents in this application. You have individual documents within folders, or you can have projects. And each organization has both advantages and disadvantages that I will go through with you in a moment. The folder this system allows you to have individual topics and notes dedicated to a topic. This is especially important for students, for example. In my folder, I have notes for 18 topics. With this setup, each individual note will have its own dedicated canvas, meaning I can easily export my rough notes out of the canvas for each specific topic. However, when I study, I use textbooks. And here's where the problem arises with this kind of setup. For each of these topics, I need to add the textbooks that I need for the subject. It's the same subject, so I will be using the same two textbooks for each and every topic in the subject. On average, each topic is about five megabytes and my textbooks are 92, which 93 and 87 megabytes each. So each time I add a textbook to my studies place, the application makes a copy of that textbook, which uses up a lot of space on my iPad, which is not an ideal situation, but at least I can export my individual topics out of the application. This is not the only problem you have. You also have another problem in that Liquid Text does not handle big files very well. Either it will crash or it will simply take a ridiculous amount of time to load. And by ridiculous amount, I really mean a couple of minutes. I'm a very impatient human being. So it's okay if you have a delay or if an application takes time to load once in a while. But in Liquid Text, when you have big files, it will, every single time when you're saving or when you're trying to open some documents, it will take a very long time to load. The second organization option is one that will definitely save you a lot of space. I thought it wise to use this method for my second semester studying instead of having individual topics. I added all my topics to one project. Smart, right? I know. I thought so too. Apologies, I am obsessed with organizing my documents. That way I can tell what's missing at a glance. It's just what I do. I like my information organized because I feel like it's organized in my brain too. So now I can still view my topic 
and the two textbooks and liquid text allows you to compare up to three documents at a time which is a decent number and since you can easily switch between the documents this is not a problem at all i hope you can appreciate just how much space i have saved with this method my whole project right now is taking 217 megabytes versus the almost 200 megabytes per topic which i got using the first method the only problem with this space saving solution is that now all my topics only have one canvas Maybe I could write notes for a topic and export them and then clear that canvas. It's doable, but it's again not ideal. I feel like all the options you get working with your documents in Liquid Text, they need a bit of improving. Back to the home page of Liquid Text. You can edit your documents. When you select some documents, you get options to export those documents, either to some cloud service through the files app, via email, or to other applications on your iPad. You can delete a document. It gets permanently deleted from the application. There's no way to recover your documents once you've deleted them. I have nothing to say about this. I'm just shaking my head in disbelief. You can view your documents according to name of files or date. I'm not really sure if this is date created or date modified. It does not specify. You can view your documents as lists or as thumbnails. And this is where you add new folders to your application. You can rename your folders or documents. Then you can search a word and it will show all the files in your notes that contain that word. It does this in a millisecond and I find that quite impressive. But then it doesn't highlight the search terms within the documents, which makes this universal search feature a bit useless for me personally. What is the point of me finding the word if it's not going to be highlighted in the individual documents when I get into them? Liquid Text doesn't have a lot of settings for you to customize. Under General, you have an option to turn on the left-hand mode. It will switch the sides where your documents and canvas are. And this is what the left side mode looks like. But I am right-handed, so I will quickly change this back. Liquid Text also has some tips and tutorials if you're finding the application a bit difficult to use. And these can be quite helpful. You can resize these columns to whatever ratios you want. And I also have a doc pane open, which shows me all the documents available in my project. You can add as many files as you like to your liquid text project or doc pane, but you can only compare a maximum of three documents at a time during your study sessions. And I think this is great that this application allows you to have so many documents in one place and you don't need to keep on leaving the your workspace or your canvas to go look for a document. You can just add all your documents to one place and just focus on going through those documents. If your document has a contents page, then this is where you access it using this icon here at the bottom. This is how the application looks when you are using it in full screen in landscape mode. But when you split view the application with another app, your writing canvas automatically goes to the bottom with all your documents above it. And this is also the same setup that you get if you turn your iPad into portrait mode. The zoom size of the canvas doesn't change in split view, which is very important if you really want to keep your handwriting uniform when writing. Most applications change the zoom when you split view. Take a look at notability on the right. The size of my handwriting is changing when I change the split view ratio. But when you compare that to the one in liquid text, which is on the left, in liquid text it's not changing at all, which is great. This is a feature underrated by a lot of developers actually. It's very important that when I'm writing something, even though I split view, I would like to still remain on the same zoom ratio that I was using before. These two arrows will help you navigate to the previous or next locations on your documents. It is a history log of your current activity or your current study session within the application and it resets every time you close the project. At the bottom of the application, you get all your annotation tools. The text tool allows you to select text very easily. Then you get options to comment on the selected section, or you can do a lot of different things when you select your text.
Liquid Text released an update a few days ago that improved the handwriting experience in the application. I am impressed. The inking in the application is now better than in Notability. In fact, this is the most accurate representation of my handwriting I have seen in any application so far since I went paperless, which is very impressive and very exciting. This update might just make me consider using Liquid Text as a note-taking application. It's not for that, but it can still do that. So why not? Why not give it a shot? The highlighter looks better on the document than it does on the canvas. And so I don't think I'll be using this too much. Well, I actually never use this too much. One thing I like about Liquid Text is how easy it is to connect ideas in whatever direction I want. And this is something that I've always enjoyed about the application. Very important and very useful for mind mapping because that's what I do. I am a mind mapper. That's how I connect information and that's how I make sense of what I'm learning. So I really like this about Liquid Text and this is probably one reason why you would actually want to use this application. So all the ideas can be linked and obviously your extractions are connected to the documents you took them from. A simple tap on your extractions will take you where that note is. And I find this really important if you want to keep your references. Yeah, sometimes you don't actually understand what you're writing and sometimes you don't even know what you were thinking when you were writing that. So it's always very useful for you to be able to go back where you got your information from. I was very happy when they added the lasso tool to Liquid Text. It made the application more user-friendly. One of the perks of going paperless is flexibility, which you can't get on paper. So it made absolutely no sense that an application so great and so amazing with so many rich features didn't have a lasso tool. You can add sticky notes to your canvas. You can handwrite your sticky note or you can type it. The choice is yours. The application gives you some options to customize your Apple Pencil to double tap shortcut. As you guys can see, mine is turned off because I find this distracting. It's not very useful for me, but it's a great option to have. And if you like that tap shortcut, the application has it. And you can check out all the options that they have. The canvas in Liquid Text is infinite. You can write in any direction and the canvas will continue expanding. And this is perfect for massive mind maps. Terrible though if you intend to share your notes with anyone else. This is really a bad idea. You should probably not do it. When searching your documents, you have the option to search through your visible documents, which are the three documents that I have open right now. Or you can search through all the documents in your project and you see which ones contain the word you're searching for. You can then pinch your documents to see all the pages that contain the search term that you've just looked for. You can share different formats of your notes with others. Obviously, the liquid text file format only opens in liquid text, so you'd share this format with other people that have the application. And then you can share PDFs. You can export your documents only or your workspace. And you have quite a few options to choose depending on what you want to use the documents for or how you want the documents to look. You can also export notes outlines. You can choose how they look from these options here. The application lets you preview how they will look before you export them, which is very useful because you might not actually understand what they mean by the options. But if you can see it on the side, then you know, you can just pick whatever works for you and deselect whatever doesn't work for you.
Lastly, you have the option to update the original document you uploaded your files from. Very handy if you annotate your PDFs and want those annotations saved permanently across all your documents and this can actually be quite useful. And that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you guys found this video useful. Give it a thumbs up if you did and let me know if you guys are interested in a comparison video between liquid text Ta -da! and margin note. Dun 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 dun. I have no idea where I just got those from, but anyway, I was trying to be dramatic and hopefully you got the idea. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.